On November 8th, America threw a Molotov cocktail in downtown Washington, D.C. Now, we all know what a Molotov cocktail is. It's a bottle, and you fill it full of ga gas, and then you put the wick in it, and then you take your Bic lighter, and you light it, and you throw it. It's, it's a revolution. And that's what Americans did. That's what Americans did on November 8th. They threw a Molotov cocktail, and his name is Donald Trump, into downtown Washington, D.C. They said, we had eight years of Bush, not much happened. We had eight years of Obama, we didn't like that. We're starting all over. We're having a revolution. And that's what Donald Trump is. And that's how he got elected. He got elected because he's rude, he's crude, he's, he's, he's a bully. But they, America said, we don't care. We need to start over. We need to throw a Molotov cocktail into downtown Washington, D.C. Ten days before the election, his pollster said, Minnesota's in play. They said, you're Minnesota's in play. You need to go over to Minneapolis-St. Paul and, and hold a rally. And he didn't win Minnesota, but it, it, he lost it by just a little bit. They hadn't voted for a Republican since 1984. For insurance reasons or Secret Service, or for some reason, he had to RSVP. I, I don't know what, why he had to RSVP, because rallies are the other way. They just want everybody to come. But anyway, he had to RSVP. He had 6,000 yes RSVPs in four hours. And that's when I turned to my wife and I said, this guy's going to win. And he, win, he did. Um, and a lot of people, including me, didn't think you could, you could win. You know, you, you can't insult your way to the presidency. You know, he, he referred to, to women by their genitalia. I thought it was all over when he did that which gave a new meaning to the phrase, rub people the wrong way. Uh, uh, let's talk about his Twitter account. As I said, he has 25.1 million Twitter followers. You know why he does it? He's the same reason FDR did fireside chats. It's a direct communication to the American people. There's no filter. Uh, I was a journalist for many years. I do media training. And one of the things I always say when I do media training is, if you can eliminate the filter, that reporter, that editor, that producer, whoever it is, your message goes directly to the people. And FDR did it with fireside chats. Remember Ronald Reagan used to uh, uh, address the nation from the Oval Office, and the next day you could not get on the phone in the Capitol because the phone lines were overwhelmed because Reagan said, call your representatives in, in the House and the Senate. And that's what, Twitter, that's what uh, Trump is doing with his Twitter account. This is his version of the fireside chat. Now, Reagan and, and FDR both had editors or filters. Uh, <laughs> Trump, Trump could use an editor. <laughs> Normalized relations with Cuba right before the election. Boy, that cost him a lot of votes right in Florida, didn't it? Especially the Cuban vote. One third of the Latino vote in Florida voted for Trump. So um, America really, really wanted to change. And I'll give you another example. Now that we elect Trump, Bernie Sanders won 22 primaries. That's changed. Now, we were not going to elect a 73-year-old socialist, but he won 23 primaries. That was a sure sign. Trump's victory and Bernie winning 22 uh, 20, 22 primaries are a sure sign that, that uh, are you all right? <laughs> um, that, that, that America really, really want to change. And change is what they're getting. Paul Ryan and Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell and Donald Trump have sat down in a room and they've come to this agreement. Washington, D.C. is a three-legged stool. There's the House, the Senate, and the presidency. It's just like stools fall down if you only have two legs. Nothing gets done in Washington. You need the House, you need the Senate, you need the presidency, you need to all be playing on the same page. That's how stuff gets done. Uh, Paul Ryan and Mitch McConnell looked, looked uh, Donald Trump right in the eye and told him that, and, he, and Trump has said he's going he's to play ball. So we'll see. now let's look at the Senate. As we know, there's 100 members of the Senate, and a third are up every year. So there's 33 up next year. 25 of the 33 are Democrats. And in 25 of those states, 10 of those 25 states, Trump won. So he's going to have a lot of sway over those 10 senators. And he's going to be able to go into those states and say, you know what? Your guy's not playing ball. You voted for me, so you've got to vote for the other guy now. So Trump has got 62 Senate, 62, uh, 52 Republicans and 10 kind of senators who say, look, if I don't play ball with this guy, he could cost me my seat in, in two years. So we're